Welcome back, everybody, for game number three between Davenport University and St. Clair College. This one could be the decider. Of course, match point here for St. Clair College. And they definitely want to secure this now if they can. Of course, like I was mentioning earlier in the beginning of the broadcast, St. Clair and Davenport both on the bubble seat for NACE playoffs. Of course, the top four teams make it in there. And these teams are currently both fifth and sixth. With St. Clair being two wins and three losses, da Davenport being two and two right now in the season. Now they did decide to switch sides this time. Attacking first is going to be St. Clair here on Eichenwald. So the initial section here, we're going to have to try and attack all the way around to this section here. Capture that. And start pushing that cart all the way to the end. Let's see what the St. Clair Saints can pull off here. It looks like Ogpan was trying to be cheeky. And he's going to get completely punished right away. Strider not going to fall for any of that shenanigans. And the rest of the St. Clair squad doing the same. Chasing down and really starting to harass some of the members on the side of Davenport. We do see Bailable. Picking up the Echo for probably the first time this season, I think, or one of the few times this season. We do not get to see it very often from him. As St. Clair looking to start pressuring on this cart. We see Strider diving into the back line. Prince Wada finds one, but Yustin's going to get picked out extremely quickly. Seymour and Prince Wada both sitting there on the cart, ready to go. Apostle going to bring one of his members back. And it's exactly what they need just to kind of be the extra point on top, considering how one-sided it seemed like that team fight felt. Or the side of St. Clair. And they're going to opt to actually start moving ahead real quick. There's a lot of times you'll see teams start to set up here right on the castle. And sure enough, that's exactly what Davenport planned to do. So Seymour, Apostle, and the rest of the St. Clair team available as well. Look to do some harassment. A nice shot, though, from Daishnitzel. Going to shut that down. However, Bridgewater diving in. Point blank here with the monkey. But that's a lot of... Uh, a lot of firepower coming back at him. That's going to be Strider with a huge double. Taking down Dwarves. Taking down Lucas Magic. And Seymour finding a kill for himself as well. So three members down right now on the side of Davenport. They're trying to stop this card as we can see. But it's just absolute chaos from this section moving forward. And they're going to be falling back all the way to the second checkpoint's finish. Slowly starting to push this thing towards the bridge. We do see Davenport coming to the high ground once again. Bailable with an extremely quick pick. We do see Strider in the mix as well. Trying to be an absolute nuisance to the back line. And there comes the Primal Rage coming out from Prince Wada. Going to push them completely off the point. Seymour is right there as well. Point blank with a couple of the members. Finds two. And St. Clair just completely destroying Davenport in this team fight. And they're going all the way into the castle now. Which is of course the final spawn for Davenport, looking for that triple. He might be looking to get cheeky with this. Strider nearly has his pulse bomb as well. How crazy of a flank would this be if he can pull this off? That available in the meantime might have exposed himself a little bit, but is going to be saved by the nick of time. That's going to be the diva bomb coming from a very odd angle, but they are going to be able to hold that. Strider caught out. The flank did not go as planned. He's going to get blown up pretty well instantly. A little bit of an overconfident offense coming out here from St. Clair. They're definitely losing this one. DPS players are both down but not out. Apostle getting picked out as well. It's going to be Yus and Seymour and Strider running for the hills. Prince Wada running as well. They're going to have to regroup after that one. That did not go as planned. A brief second to regroup. So Strider does have Pulse Bomb available, possibly able to delete somebody right away. That being said, side of Davenport, five ultimates on deck here. They've been saving basically everything for this final push, which considering how everything's been going, I guess it is what it is. That's going to be one pick. It's going to be the Pulse Bomb on target. Here comes the Graviton from the side of Davenport, but it's not going to be very effective. Nobody goes down. Strider jumping in, and it's going to get messy now. Here for these teams as we're battling right at the final checkpoint. Prince Wada dives in. He's going to get stunned out. That cart is moving forward slowly but surely. He's pinching everybody right into the corner. They can't even move at this point. That is a rough spot to be in for sure. Prince Wada absolutely tearing them apart with the rest of the St. Clair team. 
Lucas Magic gonna find one, but Daishnitzel, he tried to come in with the dead eye, but it's not gonna be effective enough. Strider and Apostle still on point. That cart is right there. They're getting greedy with this. That's a really late EMP, but they're thinking that they could fight them off, the two of them alone. That is really odd. They do try to res Seymour in the meantime. He's back on point, back in this fight. So we see, get the overhead view here. It's again Schnitzel nearly going down, but Seymour, that the res coming out from Apostle is not going to be effective enough. Everybody else from St. Clair went down, so barely. That cart is going to hang on by a thread, and that was nearly a quick three cap for St. Clair. They still have three minutes, 20 seconds left on the clock to make something happen. Schnitzel taking a little bit of damage. Of course, Yustin back on that Zenyatta has been this entire game so far. That is That got completely denied there from Dwarves. He went for it, but it didn't even come out. EMP completely wasted. That's a huge, huge piece of utility gone for them. But Prince Wada is going to get taken out extremely quickly after getting caught in that Graviton. So now it's going to be a rough fight for St. Clair as a nano-boosted Zarya coming out here from Qua and Lucas Magic is going to tear up the Saints. Seymour... And his baby D.Va is going to be trying his best to uh, charge up, possibly get into the mech. But that's a bad place to be in. And this is actually a massive stagger on the side of Davenport. Beautifully done. This next 6v6 is going to take forever. And that's exactly what they need to do. They need to take a lot of time off this clock. And that was one way to do it. Davenport opt in the fight from the side. We see... Schnitzel trying to make the flank happen, but Prince Wada not going to fall for it. Going to get stunned up, but he's not going to allow the Dead Eye to go off. Seymour finds Ogpan, and they're going to chase us down into the castle itself. Schnitzel goes down. Seymour charging in as we're charging in with the rest of the St. Clair squad as well. L Wada leading the charge as everybody's stuck in the corner again. And one by one, Davenport will fall. This cart is going to be basically uncontested as we see it just inches away, and they secure it. Three points for St. Clair College. I'm actually extremely surprised that we did see Duarf's EMP like go off in terms of the fact that he used it, but it didn't actually EMP anybody. So it absolutely wasted utility, unfortunately, there for Davenport, and it's going to make it, ex or did make that last fight way harder than it needs to be. And of course for Davenport, this isn't going to be easy. There's no leeway for them. So even if they make it all the way down here, score themselves three points, get into the box, can they do it in under two minutes like St. Clair has? They still have two, like a minute 50 left in their time bank. They could definitely abuse that later if they want. But the tides have turned. We have to see how St. Clair will opt to defend here on Eichenwald. I don't see a difference in regards to team composition this time by. Gonna try it again on defense this time. Yeah, charging through, and of course, Strider's right there on the Echo just to try and get some additional alt charge, and they're going to go through the building. Qua going to take the long way around. Of course, being a sniper and a healer at the same time, you don't necessarily want to be point blank with everybody. We do see Bailable on Tracer Duty going to try and give Schnitzel a run for his money. A Schnitzel now on a Reaper. This is going to be the first time I think we've seen Reaper in this game for him. And Lucas Magic finding Apostle extremely quickly, but Yasin going to trade things out pretty quickly. Holy Charge, Lucas Magic, ready to start burning through some of these players of St. Clair. Nearly chunking out uh, Seymour. They're going to keep him alive. That's going to be the orb coming out here from Yustin. Let's him keep on healing while he keeps peppering, peppering out damage. Available gets caught, though. Gets pinned, actually. So a huge play there for Ogpan. That's going to be Lucas Magic now. Completely buffed up by is Anna, and this is going to completely plow through St. Clair. Fully charged, nano-boosted Lucas Magic on the Zarya. Just going to tear through everybody. Manages to find one more. 
And this one is going to be going down. So sure enough, on point. We will see one point on the board for uh, for Davenport. And now it's time to see if they can push this cart as well as St. Clair did. Lucas Magic does have the Graviton available, but Bailable just kind of came on pretty clutch there. Finding a quick triple, two with the Pulse Bomb, finally goes down. A three kills for one death, not too bad, my friend. Not bad at all. This is not your time. A very aggressive position here for St. Clair. They're past the card, basically where the first point was even located. And they're not going to let Davenport move at all. Of course, this is why this castle is so devastating. Just being able to pepper so much damage onto the side of Davenport before they can even get in there. The ult coming in from Strider is going to turn himself into Prince Wada and go absolutely crazy with them as both of them just charged in together. That's the beauty of Echo. Being able to uh, use it where you see fit. Pick what exactly you need for that scenario. And that was definitely proper considering the close quarters conditions. We do have a couple alts ready and waiting here on the side of Davenport if they can figure it out. That is going to be a decent DMP this time coming out here from Dwarfs. Diva Mech is not going to come back down in time for Seymour as well. So not too much use here for Davenport, but they do win the team fight. So they're going to be able to push this further and further halfway across. That is a little bit of an over-eager apostle, but he may be looking to switch himself up after popping that Valkyrie. Have to see momentarily as Yustin goes down as well, and it is going to be smooth sailing here for Davenport for the time being as we see them finally making it to the bridge. Three minutes still left on the clock. Dwarfs, though, getting completely blitzed by Strider. Echo can do a lot of burst damage. That's going to be the Graviton, but who's there to follow up? How about a huge purple from Quab of all people? Nicely done. Shutting down any sort of healing. He's going to eat a Pulse Bomb for his troubles, but that was the kind of team fight that uh, Davenport needed, and they're going to be able to successfully push this to the second point. They have four minutes to make it all the way to the end. I mean, sometimes supports don't get enough love, but a solid play there from Qua, as everybody was all grouped up, landing the grenade to make healing impossible on the side of St. Clair for the moment. Was able to blow everybody up with the help of the team afterward. And then that's a that's a huge uh, play. Speaking of huge play, that shatter went completely into two members of St. Clair, and they're going to try to capitalize. Bailable is going to take down Ogpan. However, he's going to trade his life out for it, as we are now just across the hall from the finish. That is a buffed up Prince Wada with the Nano Boost on, but he's not exactly in, in a, a position to try and actually contest this. Bailable going to find Lucas Magic and is going to try and keep pushing them forward, but it's not going to be effective as the rest of Davenport moving towards the bridge. They're pushing all the way out. Three minutes still on the clock, and they're going to wait here as Apostle got slept, so he's going to bring the rest of the team back to him. It gives Davenport the opportunity to try and relax just a little bit longer. Wada getting purpled while taking a ton of damage as well. That's a solid EMP. The entire team of St. Clair is completely EMP'd. But at the same time, not very many members of Davenport were really able to capitalize on it. So we ride in with Schnitzel as he's point blank dueling. Available, not going in his favor at all. Dwarf's trying to get in there as well. Mess with the healing. But here comes Seymour. The Diva Bomb is on point. Not going to hit anybody, however. Apostle whipping out the pistol. I might be a healer, but I could do some damage too. Putting the pressure onto Dwarfs. Going to force him to go away for the time being. You see someone going for a ride. That's going to be a trade-off as uh, Strider is going to get pushed away by Ogpan. But it's going to trade one for one. Ten seconds until St. Clair pulls ahead in regards to the time bank. But there is still quite the distance here if uh, if Davenport wants to actually even get the three points. So it can 
be nerve wracking. Here comes the flux. Here comes the shatter. That was actually huge. Bailable in the background over there was able to tear through three members of Davenport while the tanks were so much further ahead that it did not work in their favor. I think that was Prince Wada who dropped the shatter as the Graviton comes out. You get a false sense of security when you see so many members of St. Clair or of your opponent in general tied up in that Graviton that sometimes you just want to go in. And unfortunately there, Ogpan did not have the shield up and ready and many members got shattered which just allowed Bailable spin the win and Death Blossom all over. Minute left on the clock to try and get to that third checkpoint. Big Purple on the tank line of St. Clair. Bailable with the flank as well. This time it's going to be Schnitzel starting to spin the win here. Death Blossom right in the front of everybody. And that was a huge one for them. They got so many members of St. Clair taken out. Apostle going to try and make something work. Strider bringing out the Doomfist. Actually a huge shield there from Lucas Magic, however, though, keeping his support alive. Qua still in the game. That is going to be the EMP coming out from Dwarfs as well. Does catch two. Where did you take me on this journey? As we do finally see the action, that's going to be the Shatter coming out here from Wada. Not going to be effective. That's going to be the Shatter coming out from Ogpan. This time it actually works right on target. Apostle, the only one keeping this one alive, trying to force Davenport to go into overtime um, timings. And it's going to be the case three points to three points. But this time, St. Clair have 2 minutes and 34 seconds on the clock, while Davenport is going to get the minimum 1 minute of time on the clock. <clears throat> now with overtime rules, this is going to be a little bit different. So we're going to start all the way at the back, but we have much less time to work with. I would be surprised if we make it all the way back to another recap scenario. But I'm going to make a commentary curse kind of bet and assume that the battles will just strictly be over this first point here. I would be very surprised to see either team come through in a minute and clean this up. But like with most things commentary, I would absolutely love to be wrong. I'd like to be surprised too. Okay, this time Bailable is going to be over on Echo Duty while Strider is picking up the Tracer. As St. Clair defending first in this overtime. Similar style, we're going to see the Echo try and pick off some extra damage in these next couple seconds. Boosted up by Apostle as well. But that's perfect for Lucas Magic. Gets the opportunity to try and build some shield charge or laser charge rather trying to figure out which way they want to go they're going to end up going across to the left hand side they do manage to get onto point and this is where the skirmish is going to happen we do have Ogpan leading the charge but nobody else really with him except Schnitzel Finally, are starting to move forward as they do take out Strider. So one of the DPS is gone. Apostle going to try and res him, actually. Available on the left-hand side, going point blank there with uh, Qua, but actually got the worst end of it. Solid job there from Qua. Available does manage to finish off Ogpan, however. And now this is starting to get a little bit messy as we move forward. Available in the skies, trying to make something work here. Finds Schnitzel. Can he blow him up? He's going to be successful in doing so. St. Clair on on pace to hold this. Four seconds left on the clock. A solid boop actually from Chance, but it doesn't completely knock off Yustin from the point. So it's still going to be a problem here. As so many members from Davenport still on the point itself. I'm trying to find them right now. That's another kill there from Yustin. Bar ticking down. Can anybody touch? They are in fact going to be able to. That's going to be the Wraithwalk used from Schnitzel as well as Dwarves. And Schnitzel going to be going down. Shatter comes out from Prince Wada. Can that be enough? And sure enough, that's going to be a complete hold here for St. Clair College. They will just have to take one third of the control point in order to win this round and win the game. A solid attempt from Davenport University that time, but did not go in their favor. I don't think they were able to secure any score on that at all. I'll get confirmed momentarily, but 
I think Sinclair just needs to get a third in order to get this win. Ready for battle. And if this goes through, this would be interesting to say the least. This looks like a full-fledged dive composition if I've ever seen one. As we do have Prince Wada thinking about the Hammond right away, or the Wrecking Ball rather. And Seymour with the ultimate pick machine, of course, in Roadhog. Start off the fight with a quick uh, 6v5 by just straight up eliminating somebody, hooking them in, and blowing them up. We'll have to see how it goes. A very similar defensive composition on the side of Davenport. And if they want to keep themselves in the game here, it's now or never. Dwarfs does spot the the uh, Echo Mercy here. And because of that, now Echo's going to be flying solo with no uh, no assistance from Apostle. Looking for their chance to strike as I get bodied by trees. But Yustin's going to get taken down nice and quick. Lucas Magic making it work. Going to probably take Seymour out of mech as well. That was extremely close, actually. So far, so good right now for Davenport. Kind of putting St. Clair in that odd spot. Do they go in? Do they not? Strider getting blown up. A nice grenade from Qua once again. Going to force St. Clair all the way back. And it's going to be Seymour getting demecked as well. As we see them run for the hills once again. And then back to the checkpoint. Minute 30 on the clock. And sure enough, St. Clair does only need to get a third of the original capture time on this point but they only have a minute 20 to do so davenport actually aren't in too bad of a situation here this is completely doable to do the full hold and we could have ourselves a draw which would be the first time i've had one of those in a long time but actually bailable finding schnitzel right away that's a huge dps player out of the play and seymour getting another one bailable slept on the point but it does not matter he found lucas magic lucas magic did absolute work in that last fight and st Clair are going to win this match in 3-0 fashion This might be that overtime play that I was thinking about where Lucas Magic was absolutely <laughs> jacked up on charge, gets nano boosted as well, and you are not long for this world apostle as they chase down everybody else. That's a squishy support in Yustin. There's another one. Lucas Magic was doing a fantastic job, of course, but for um, all for naught in this case here. Sensational. Sensational indeed. A solid 3-0 for St. Clair and a team that should, in theory, have been a very even match up against them in regards to their record. This is now going to move St. Clair to 3-3 three and three on the season and put them just a little bit better off in regards to that playoff race. I'm going to see if I have the, um, the stats open nearby. I just want to double-check it. Because, yeah, we... Everybody that's ahead of us as of this moment were all teams that we did lose to. So, like, Kettering University, we had a good match with them, but unfortunately could not pull that one off. Northwood, I don't think we've played yet in in Nace. That being said, though, I think we have Northwood next week, and they're currently leading the group for the Saints. So far being, I think, 5-0, and oh, sitting there with 10 points. So, absolutely brutal. The MTU Huskies we played earlier in the season. I think we dropped to them. And then I'm not sure who Team 3 is as it doesn't show an actual name. But still, this could be interesting here for St. Clair as we move forward. Because, of course, right on the bubble, 3-3. Three and three, They're not doing bad, but they've definitely not given themselves any wiggle room as we look to close this season out. As playoffs, I do believe, start in just a couple of weeks. I'm going to quickly double check as well. Because, yeah, as soon as we get into November, playoffs start. So we only have, like, another week or two of matches. And the fact that we have to play Northwood next week, the current group leaders, that's going to be rough. But I'm sure they can do it. We'll have to see. Be sure to follow on Saints Gaming CA here on Twitch to make sure that you catch those matches live. Or if you can't catch this live, either on the Twitch uh, past broadcast section, be sure to catch the VODs there. 
or subscribe to our massive YouTube archive that has uh, matches all the way back since when Saints Gaming first became a thing. So be sure to check that out. I also want to give a big thank you to the sponsors, of course, once again, that make this all happen. St. Clair College, the Student Representative Council, St. Clair Alumni Association, Duckman School of Business and Technology, EC Outlet, and Tim Hortons. Thank you all so much. And lastly, before we close out here tonight, let's take a look at the matches that we have lined up for the next couple days. On Friday, Rainbow Six Siege returns. This time, though, Collegiate R6 action. The team's been doing pretty well. They rebounded extremely well after their loss two weeks ago from Akron, taking down the next team extremely, extremely quickly that they saw on uh, on Friday. But this week, they're up against St. Peter's University, so we'll have to see what happens there. The next day, Collegiate R6 Championships, this one being Ubisoft's league or Face It's league, going up against a uh, team unknown. I don't know that exactly yet. But later on that Saturday, 7 o'clock, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare action, TESPA action. We finally get to see their season opener. So many people have been asking, when does Call of Duty start? Well, you don't have to wait much longer. Right around the corner. We have more Call of Duty action on Sunday as well. And then if you want to see the Rocket League team that absolutely put on a barn burner earlier this uh, this evening, the one that we saw before this Overwatch match, you'll catch them next on Monday as we're going with some more UCEA action as they go up against Northwestern College. Of course, all matches and time subject to change. It's something can definitely switch things up. But with that, that is going to close out our coverage here for Live Saints Gaming Matches for tonight. I thank you all for riding along with me here. And uh, if you want to follow any of my personal uh, Twitters, if Twitter's actually working, Banner Broadcasts is where you can find me and what kind of esports antics I'm up to. Spoiler alert, it's probably something Saints related, but would definitely appreciate the follow. But with that, we'll close out. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you all for tuning in. You all are fantastic. I'll see you tomorrow.